Thank you, Father. All right, understanding the goodness of God. Turning your Bibles to Romans chapter number 10. I'm, I'm going to stagger your faith a little bit onto greater faith. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm going to stagger your theology a bit this morning onto more robust and more rounded theology. So get ready. Are you ready? Romans chapter number 10 and verse 17. All right. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how then does faith come? How does faith come? By hearing and hearing what? The word of God. Praise God. So most of the time when we ask people, how does faith come? The scripture that comes to mind is this very scripture. Romans chapter number 10 and verse 17. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But this scripture is not a standalone scripture. It is a scripture that is the summary or inference of a particular line of thought. From verse 13 of Romans chapter number 10. The Bible tells us, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? All right, how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who had believed our report. And then verse 17, so then, come on, say so then. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, when the word of God is preached to us, the preaching of God's word brings about the hearing of it. Until it is preached, it cannot be heard. The hearing of the word comes as a result of the preaching of the word. Can someone say amen to that? But you see, the preaching of the word is not about the preaching of the word as it were. It is the telling of someone about an identity, somebody, who that person is. Glory to God. That's what the word of God is all about. So if you read from verse 13, it says, Whosoever shall call upon him, the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom, speaking of a person, in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So the hearing is about somebody, is of him, is of an identity, a person. So the hearing of faith is not just in the hearing of what is being said, but in the hearing of what is being said of the person that is being revealed. Did you catch that? For example, there was an intro, a media intro that introduced me. All right? That's not me. Amen? It was just priming you, prepping you, getting you ready to meet the man himself. So when the word of God is preached, the word of God is not about the preaching of the word as it were. It is about the preaching of the word of someone, about somebody, of a person, an identity. Can someone say amen to that? Because that particular verse, verse 17 so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, so then faith cometh by hearing the word of God of the Savior, of the Lord, of the goodness of God. Amen? Are you from what I'm saying here? So it is the 
pointing the signpost to a person. The word is preached to reveal a person to us, the nature of a person. So faith comes by hearing things about the person that endears you to the person, and in that love and fellowship with that person, your faith is actually strengthened and rounded. Can someone say amen to that? So it's not just about the audibility of the word. It's not in the audio of the word. It is actually in the revelation of the person that the word is talking about or speaking of. Are you from what I'm saying here? That's how it happens. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God. Now, capture that, put it in view. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, what does it take to be saved? Calling upon the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a person. The Lord himself is a person. A name is a person. Shegun is not S-E-G-U-N. Shegun is what? He's a person. When you say Jesus, Jesus is not just a pronouncement. Jesus is more than a confession. Jesus is what? A person. He's a person. So you see, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, come on now, shall be saved. So that means this call upon the name of the Lord is what brings about what? Salvation. But how does that happen? How does it happen? How then shall they call on him? In whom they have not believed. So you see, their faith is actually, you know, to endear them to the one that they have come. Faith is a pointer to a person. It's a signpost to a person. And that's why everyone who believed God in the old covenant, in the day of Jesus, in his dispensation, they had to come to Jesus to substantiate their faith. The centurion believed, came to Jesus. Amen. The Syrophoenician woman believed, came to Jesus. Glory to God. Jehiros believed, come on now, came to Jesus. See? Jesus had to speak a rhema, a word for the moment. And that word was what substantiated their faith. Amen? Because faith is premised on the power of God. Faith cannot validate itself because it is of somebody. It is about something of somebody. Faith is not just faith all by itself. Paul said to the church at Corinth, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. I came, how? Demonstrating the spirit and the power of God. To what end? That your faith may be where? In the power of God, not in the wisdom of man. The wisdom of man is not strong enough, potent enough to substantiate the faith of anybody. That a message made sense to you does not mean it can change your life. Logic is not enough to change anybody's life. Are you from saying here? So there's the power of God. There's the power of God that substantiates our faith. So it tells us here, how shall they call on him? It's, it's the call. Calling upon the Lord, it says, brings about salvation. So Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So that means it takes faith to call on him. Faith in him to call on him. Can we say that together? It takes faith in him to call on him. Come on, come on. Can we say that together? It takes faith in him to call on him. It takes faith in the Lord to call on him. You see it? So how then shall they call on him of whom they, I mean, in whom they have, they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So he's saying something here. So the preacher, come on, the preacher comes to preach. And the preaching of the preacher is not about the preacher. It's about the Lord. And that's why the gospel is not the gospel of a thing or a person other than the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is good news about Jesus. You see it? So, the preacher comes and he preaches of him. 
Why? Because it takes faith in him, all right, to call upon him to be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, most of the time, people separate faith from the person of God. That's their challenge because they are word of faith people. They are too word of faith to be separated from intimacy and fellowship with God. So the whole thing is now mechanical. He lacks substance because it takes a person to make your faith in him credible. If you have believed in say, well, I know Pashegu. Ah, Pashegu. He taught me the word when I was in Ife. And someone said, eh, he's in town. Eh? Let's go and see him. Say, eh, I don't want to see him actually. Why? I said, okay, well, let's go, let's go. You claimed to know Pastor Shegun in Ife. All right, now Pastor Shegun is standing here. and said, Pastor Shegun, you know I met you in Ife. I said, well, mm, I've met a lot of people. I'm not sure I met you for Your faith, what your claim becomes what? Unfounded. Unfounded. Because, you see, it takes a person to validate. That's why witnesses in the court of law. The witness of a man who was there, who saw the thing and come, he says, look, I even, I even videoed it, I cameraed it, I pictured it, I snapped it, I did everything. I was there. When it was happening, live. That witness is very authoritative. True? Very potent. So sometimes, you see, people just listen to God's word and when they listen to God's word, in their mind, they are thinking, it's just by the audibility of it alone that faith comes. The audibility is to point you to a person when you are endeared and you know the Lord. I'll show you scriptures. Amen? You can't doubt him. You can't know God and doubt God. You may know about God and doubt God. You may know things about God and doubt God, but you cannot know God and doubt him. <laughs> so when we're talking about rock solid faith, faith that stands as the mountains of Zion that cannot be removed. Amen? It is premised on the knowledge of God. But how does that knowledge come? Knowing God personally. How does it come? It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God tells us of God or about God. Now that word brings us into fellowship with God. The moment you hear of God unto fellowship with God, you have come to stay. I'm telling you. See, the challenge is that a lot of people know about God, a lot of things about God. They can tell you Many things about God, but they don't have a personal relationship with him. That's a challenge. Are you what I'm saying here? You can't know God and not, and not command some things. You see, that's why when you hear of God, there must be, that's why you see, when the word of God is being preached, there must be a longing. You mean God is good? Lord, I want to know that you are good. You see, there's no way you hear God's word and not start praying. Because the word of God is a revelation of God himself. So your heart starts panting after God. <laughs> You're a good God? <sighs> then I must know you as good. Oh, I believe that you are good. Because faith in God brings about a calling upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call upon the name of the Lord in whom they have not believed? Now that you have believed in him by the hearing of faith, listen very carefully, you are calling upon the name of the Lord. So you see, meditation in God's word, hearing about God's word, hearing of God's word is actually um, in sync and in total agreement and just one organic lump with a life of prayer. You, you can't meditate in the word of God strong enough and not give yourself to prayer. There are certain things your heart starts panting. With tears. Tears. You're crying. Not, not because you've lost somebody or you've lost something, but there's this hunger in your heart. Oh, God. You're a good God. 
You are the miracle working God. You raise the dead. I want to know you. I want to know your power. I want to see your glory. As I've seen you in the sanctuary, I want to see that glory. As I've seen you in the sanctuary, I want to see you. You are longing. And that's where the revelation of God comes. At that point, there's a spark in your heart. When you step into intimacy and fellowship with God, your faith is made. Your faith is rounded. Your faith is robust. Can someone say amen to that? When the woman with the issue of blood heard of Jesus, issue of blood, she had an issue. You know people have issues. She was not the only one that had an issue. She had an issue, but her own issue was of blood. Your issue may be of, name it, but her issue was what? Of blood. So she came. Listen, she heard of Jesus by that hearing, her faith was dead. I'm going to see him. I'm going to meet him. If I can just touch the elm of his garment, I shall be made whole. I mean, she believed. And then she came behind the press and she touched the elm of Jesus' garment. The Bible tells us the moment she touched, she felt in her body that the issue of blood had dried up. Jesus, knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him, said, who touched me? Amen. But she believed long before she came. If your faith cannot drive you into searching and longing and pressing in, it is fake. There are people who are here today, all right, they came and said, ah, the man of God is anointed, amen, God is with him, he's in Abuja, I'm going, I will get there. If you know, if people are seated here, if you know what people went through to come here, you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. Do you know what the woman with the issue of blood went through? Had been losing blood for 12 years. And losing blood, the life of the flesh is where? In the blood. So she had been losing life. Life. She couldn't walk normally. But she gathered all the strength that was in her. That, I mean, you mean Jesus heals the sick? I believe. I'm going. I will see him today. I will touch him today. Hallelujah. And she came. You see, that's one thing about faith. If you see faith, faith drives you. If you are in faith and you're just passive like that, if God wants to help me, yeah, he can help me. If he's not helping me, just, just leave me alone. The most important thing in my life is for me to make heaven. When Christ comes, he should just, that's the only thing I will not, you know, ah, he must not leave me behind. All right, look at you. Look at you. Did you just hear yourself? Amen. Amen. Is there a hunger in your have you? If I hear, if I read anything in the Bible that is available, it's part of my prayer. Le mo sanam. I'll read the scripture. I'll come again. Look at it. Ne sanam andele grosso. I'll come again. Until I start crying. I'm crying, and all of a sudden, an encounter. When you have an encounter like that, what you have received, you can give. But if you learned about it, you can only teach it, you can't impart it. Are you from what I'm saying here? That's it. You can talk about it so excellently, excellently. People hear it and say, ah, uh ah, -uh, I like the preaching. It made sense to me. Logical preaching. It, see, logic is there. Rich in logic, but no power. It is rich in wisdom, but no power. Are you from saying here? So look at it. So you call because you believe. Amen? But what brought about the believing faith? It came by hearing of God. That this is who God is. This is what he does. And then you believed. Amen? And you came calling. You came calling. You know, there are hungry people. They come what? 
calling. They just come calling, right? Oh, God, bad they come. In fact, before you finish the prayer point, you are not done. Just say, let, brethren, let's pray in the name of Allah, but let's talk. They are already praying. <laughs> did, did you hear the prayer point? The man came hungry. There are people here, in your mind, naturally speaking, you thought that you would receive your, you were going to receive your miracle, all right, maybe in two weeks or three weeks. But during the course of this service, listen very carefully, your faith is stirred. Whatever your faith is stirred to receive, you are going home with it today. You didn't hear me. I said you are going home with it today. You believe it, say a bigger amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now look at the faith of Sarah. Sarah, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and verse 11. Look at it. Hebrews 11 and verse 11. I want to show you something there. You have to be fast, beloved. Amen. It says, through faith, all Sarah herself received what? How? Through faith. How did she receive strength? Through faith. She received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him. You see, it's about somebody. Faith is always towards God. It's about somebody. It's of God. It's of him. Look at her faith. Sarah's faith. Sarah's faith. The Bible tells us that she was, she was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. You see it? Did you see it there? Him. Now let's look at our husband's faith, Abraham. In Romans chapter number 4 and verse 17. Romans 4 and verse 17. He said, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Look at it. Before him whom he believed, even God. Now Abraham believed in, come on now, God. Talk to me, church. Come on now, God. You see it? Now when faith comes by the hearing of things all right about God and you settle with those things they don't bring you to the God of those things that faith is not complete you can't hear about God and the things of God and not desire to meet the God of those things are you from what I'm saying here you need, and you come, look at the atmosphere. It's charged with the power of God. And someone says, ah, what kind of place is this? The glory of God is here. Why? Because, listen, God is here. Is it? All right. This is how it works. Glory to God. Did you see it? All right. So you see, faith is towards somebody. Faith in God. Jesus told his disciples after that he had cursed the fig tree and the fig tree had dried to the root in Mark 11. In verse 22, he said, have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. Glory to God. So he just exercised his faith in God. And by the exercise of his faith in God, he's now pointing them to God. Amen. And that's why you see, when a man of God manifests God, listen very carefully, people look up and start giving thanks to God. Why? They see the power of God. They see the glory of God. Amen. So, let me start my teaching. I just did that to pre prepare you and prime you. So, my teaching now. I'm teaching now. Praise God. All right. Now, real or true Christian faith is based on the character or nature of God as revealed to us by the word of God. Now, we can quote Romans 10 and verse 17. So, then faith comes by Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we want to make Romans 10, 17 very robust, taking it all from verse 13 of the same chapter, amen, we'll read it this way. So then faith comes by hearing of God. 
Amen? And hearing of God comes through the word of God. Simple. Did you see it? <laughs> this is it. So, you see, real or true Christian faith is not just based on just hearing things or hearing about things in the word of God. It is actually based on the character or hearing about the character and nature of God, the person of God, who God is. And that is revealed to us through the preaching of the word. Do you see it? Come on, I'm going to caught that. Good. So, how do you know true believers who truly, truly believe in God? Amen? Their faith is not based on things about God. Their faith is based on God of all things. You see it? So that means, listen very carefully, they have come to know the nature of God that does not change. The ways of God that do not change. They have come to know that God is a good God. God is a God of character. He's holy, he's righteous, he's faithful, he's kind. Amen? In other words, they have come to know God beyond the things that God does, those things that God does, those things brought them to God. Now they are endeared to the God who did those things and who does things. Praise God. That was the difference between Moses and the children of Israel. The children of Israel knew the acts of God. They knew the acts of God. But the, Moses knew the ways of God. The ways of God are not the acts of God. But the ways of God can produce the acts of God. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. There is a place in God that is stable. A place that is a rock solid place. That when you get to that place, all you know is God. His nature, his character. That God is love. No matter what is happening around you, the devil wants to tell you that you see God hates you. He's dealing with you. When he's done, he may not make it. You look at his face. Look at her face. With all the wickedness you have done, when God is done with you, he will pull your ears apart, pull your head out, you know, from your neck, and separate your legs. And when he's really done with you, he will now jump upon your children. And because, you see, people can begin to start begging God and say, oh, God, Please don't, don't kill me. All right. And God says, I don't kill people. There's only one murderer that the Bible knows and recognizes as a murderer. And that's the devil. Amen? So you see, if your faith is premised on the nature of God, listen very carefully. No matter what is happening around you, you can never be deceived. There can be deception. You can never be deceived. Why? Because, listen, you know God. The moment your faith is premised on the person, the nature, the character of God, your faith has arrived. Look at the Syrophoenician woman. The Syrophoenician woman, nobody could talk her out of her conviction. Nobody could, even Jesus could not. Jesus called her names. Listen, the first one says, look, this woman, all right, is, um, is a dog. Amen. Praise God. She said, you are right, sir. Even dogs partake of the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Can I have some crumbs? Master Jesus, and let this dog eat. Jesus said, What? Why? Listen very carefully. Our faith was not premised on the responses of Jesus' disciples to her. They, they drove her away. Leave the master. Don't trouble him. She was calling and crying. Jesus kept walking on. He didn't say a word. His disciples felt like, you should have enough sense, woman. He's not ready for you. You're not even a Jewess. You are a dog. Stranger to the covenant of Israel. 
You don't have any business in this matter. But listen, her faith was premised on the goodness of Jesus. The goodness of that. This man, if I keep crying, I know he's a good man. He will answer me. Because see, many of us quit in prayer because we, we have exhausted our faith in the power of God to do it. But you see, your faith can never get exhausted if it is based on the nature of God's goodness. That God is good. He's a good God. Oh dear. So she kept crying. She kept crying. She kept screaming. And Jesus stood and said, you are a dog. You are a gentle woman. And Jesus was right because she was not a partaker of the covenant of Abraham according to the flesh. Jesus was right. Amen. But she said, you know what? You're a good God. And Jesus looked at her and said, this is a great faith. Now, small faith is based on, all right, the power of God and all that, you know, but the great faith is based on the constancy of God's nature. You got it? All right. And that's why sometimes some people wonder that some of the things that young people in this generation know about the word of faith, some of those fathers don't talk like they talk, but the kind of results they command. This young generation can't come close to it. And so what is the secret? You see, once upon a time, they heard of God, they pressed in and pressed in. Now they've grabbed him. Their faith is premised on the goodness of God. So they know God personally. They know God for themselves. And what they command, you see, what you will command in life is going to be dependent on the God you know. When somebody comes and says, my God said that ignore the storm. No life will be lost. Uh, people say, eh? In this storm, uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to me. I mean, that is relationship, right? If you have relationship, listen very carefully, you have relationship, you know that you know that you know that certain things, no matter what happens, your lot is maintained. The heavens may collapse upon the earth. The earth may quake under your feet. For the Lord has chosen your inheritance for you, even the excellency of Jacob. You know it, you know it like you know your name. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. You know. You know. Today, people want, okay, you, you know what, just give me the formula. Take this scripture, say it 25 times. And then whatever you see coming to your mind, that's what God is saying to you. All right? People now start trying. And then they try things out. They hear strange things. God didn't say anything to them. Why? Because they are not willing to have a relationship with God. What they are willing to have, all right, is just a protocol association with God. Protocol. Do you know you can have a protocol, all right, saying to protocol you, Yet the person does not really know you. You say, yes, sir, I've been sent to protocol. Protocol relationship is official. It's formal. Are you what I'm saying here? So you see, see, see people, you know, and when you now see those who are working with God, who have a personal work with God, and the results they are commanding, envy will now start. And I did the only one. All right. Just be talking like talking bright. God spoke to you. Are you the only one that, God, that hears God? <laughs> Amen. Do you know, you see, this is how you know that you truly believe God. Listen very carefully. All right. You can point to at least one thing that your faith in God did for you. And then you can use that as a reference point that this was what God did for me last year. So, I am going to believe God for more. Amen? Amen. You have a walk with God. You've killed a bear before. You've killed a lion. And when Goliath shows up, you can tell Goliath, 
Amen. The Lord who helped me, who strengthened my hands to kill a bear and a lion, is, is helping me right now. I'm going to bring down your head. Because let me tell you something. If your confidence comes from just the things that you have seen around and not from the things that God has done with you, all right, you may get to a point if those things are not happening, you may feel like maybe they are faking it. Maybe it didn't actually happen. They're just telling false stories. But if it happened to you and you caught it yourself, are you from sitting here? You can tell them, ah, Paul stood before Agrippa. He said, I respect you as a king. But listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. I cannot be disobedient to the heavenly vision. I saw something. At noon, they had an encounter with God on the way to Damascus. I feel the Lord is calling this generation to relationship with him. Personal walk with God. Fellowship. Fellowship. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. Amen. When you can tell your children and say, can I tell you stories? All right, this was how I started. And I started this way. God took me from here. All right, we just saw the history. Amen. Just the story of how GLT started. Amen. I said amen. amen. And so that is a walk with God. It only gets better. I don't mean you won't face challenges. But one thing is certain. You will stand on top of those challenges. You will ride upon them to the place that God is taking you. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. You ride on those challenges. There's somebody here, you're listening to me. What you are going through is not going to swallow you up. <laughs> you are riding on that thing to your next level. If you believe it, say a bigger amen. That's why I always tell people, I say, look, you know, all this stage um, looking good and all that, you better wear something good on something very good. You must look good on substance. Uh -huh. There must be substance in you. If there's no substance, listen very carefully. The person just looks good. So come on, preach out the Lord, brethren. And you know, brethren. All right. At the end of the day, the brethren will just scream and all that. The yokes that sit there. The battles continue. Nothing ends. The yokes are there intact. But when you come, you're well dressed. You know what you're talking about. And you say, listen to me. By this weekend, hear the word of the Lord. This is happening. This is happening. It will happen. Because you're talking from the substance of God. Amen? Amen. Now, I always tell people, I say, all these dress and you look good and all that, you know, some people may even go and rent dresses. <laughs> some, you know, hire it and, <laughs> and some, they have not paid for it yet. They just put the thing on and look good. Listen very carefully. The lights and all that, don't let those things fool you. If you don't have it, you don't have it. You can't manufacture it. You go get it. A look alike is not enough. He said, you know, you better sit down somewhere and, you know, before a meeting and really prepare. Not just, you're just training your voice alone. <laughs> your voice is good, so train it. But do you have what it takes to push it? You have to push this. It's, it's not... Uh, what I'm wearing now, it's not, there's something inside here. It's not this thing. You know. <laughs> what I'm wearing, there's, some, there's something. By the grace of God, I make my boast in the Lord. If I look at you and say to you by the Spirit of God, this is what's going to happen, you just, just go to bed. It will happen word for word. Why? Because, you see, there's a place in God. You have to stay there. Because somehow ministry gets very big. It's getting bigger now. It's getting bigger. Some people will hide under the light. It's the light. The, just the light. Of, Praise God. And then people say, who? And, and when you see a crowd, you didn't, you didn't bring them all. 
You didn't pray them in, but you are standing on that platform to encourage them. You may think you have a ministry. That's not a ministry. Amen. And that's the mistake of young people when they stand on platforms generated through a walk with God. They suppose it for their platform. So they say, God has called me to, and they step out and they, they are stepping on nothing. Because if you step out of a platform generated by a personal walk with God, a man walked with God and is still walking with God, produce that platform. If you step out of it, you are stepping on your own platform. God help you if you don't have a walk with God. It's empty platform. The person is just saying, uh, follow me. I'm walking on waters. Whereas the person is drowned. And he wonders, and people say, well, why, why, why? What happened? <laughs> It is called the, the deceit of stage ministry. See, ministry is not here. Ministry is not here. Ministry comes here. It comes here. Ministry is behind the scene. Amen. Uh, are you from what I'm saying here? Uh-huh. Sometimes we wake up early in the morning. Na no mo sande limbra shate ande le masunda nambre nianta. You know, for some people, what they want is just you know that the Lord Himself will wake them up like two or three minutes to the time of ministration, and then they're already dressed before they went to bed, and they just wake up all of a sudden, and they say, "Hey, nabaga, sina mambrosa ele grasida." God will say, "You know what? You just shouted. You just screamed." Power didn't go with it. And I tell people, I said, listen, don't be caught in the web of ministry and you lose sight. Listen very carefully. You lose sight of what God is doing around. There are people under the sound of my voice today. You have come and God brought you. This is a day in God's agenda, the day that the Lord has made. And God set aside and apart this day from the foundation of the world. And he set aside and apart this day to be a day of blessing to you. And today, an encounter that you need to catapult you to where you rightly belong, that encounter is coming your way today in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say a bigger amen. If you believe it, say a bigger amen. amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Did you see it? Good. So, faith is based on the character of God. Let me just talk about the goodness of God very quickly. Psalm 103 and verse 8. The Bible tells us that God is merciful and gracious. Psalm 145 and verse 8. The Bible tells us in Psalm 145 and verse 8 that God is full of compassion and gracious. Amen. Psalm 145 and verse 8, full of compassion and gracious. See, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Look at it. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Now listen, God is a good God. I always tell people, I said, listen very carefully. Even if you've made mistakes in life and you have done things, I mean, really bad, really terrible. Listen very carefully. God is a good God. Did you hear me? He's a good God. He's a good God. He will forgive you. He will give you a new beginning if you believe in the goodness of God. Believe in the goodness of God. Believe in the goodness of God. Someone says, well, um, I don't know why this is happen you may, happening. You may not know why it's happening. But listen, if you know that God is good, he will take care of it. When you pray to God, pray to God in the consciousness of the goodness of God. That is a good God. Your faith is premised on the goodness of God. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. 
You see it? In Psalm 86 and verse 15, it says, God is full of compassion and gracious. Same thing. It's a gracious God. And then I love this in Psalm 116 and verse 5. Psalm 116 and verse 5. It says, our God is what? Merciful. Our God is merciful. He is merciful. He is merciful. Our God is merciful. Amen? That means he's full of mercy. Now, when you know that God is merciful, don't stay away from his mercy. Go to his mercy. If you believe in the mercy of God, come to the mercy of God. Come to the mercy of God. If you're here, you have had challenges and you've done unthinkable things and you're wondering, will I ever be forgiven? Can God forgive me? Will he forgive me? Listen very carefully. God's mercy is here. He will forgive you. He will give you a brand new beginning. A brand new beginning. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. He saved Saul. Saul of Tarsus. He saved him. He was an injurious man, but he saved him. He was wicked, but he saved him. He saved Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a tax collector and he was very dubious. Yet salvation came to his house. His, God saved him. Listen, there is no one, there is nothing, there is no situation that is beyond the grace of God, the saving grace of God. Can someone say amen to that? Because God is a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. And when he does miracles, he does miracles because he's a good God. All eyes closed. Bow your heads in reverence of God. If you're there, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. You've been wondering, can I ever come out of this? Will God ever save me? Will he ever forgive me? Listen very carefully. Your time of repentance and change has come. Raise your hand above your head. I want to pray for you. Anybody like that? You need to be born again. Raise your hand above your head. I want to pray for you. God bless you. Thank you. Raise it high. 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 Can you just step forward? Help that beloved one. Come, come, come. I want to pray for you. It's a new beginning for you today. 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 A brand new beginning. Come, 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 come. Place your right hand on your chest. Come, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Today, I believe in you that you died for my sins and on the third day you were raised again for my justification thank you for saving me I confess you as Lord of my life and Lord of my life forever and ever and ever I will follow you I will walk with you I will serve you and I will do your will thank you for helping me Amen Father, thank you for these precious ones. Be filled with the Spirit and let your life be a sweet fragrance unto God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Come on, church. Can we just wave our hands to the Lord and shout hallelujah? Hallelujah.